the Jenna and Tosh Show. I'm Tosh Taylor. And I'm Jenna Morton. And today we are joined virtually because we're being safe um, by a guest that I think everyone is going to be so excited to meet uh, the person behind the site because I think over the last uh, 10 years, James Donald has helped, I'm going to say, thousands of oh. people get out and see yeah. more of this province. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> So welcome to the podcast, James. Thanks. And Thank so the you. site, yeah, the site we're talking about is Hiking NB. And I want you to start just by giving us a little bit of background, a little bit about what the site is about for someone who's watching or listening who might not have discovered you yet. Uh, Hiking NB is, like you say, it's been uh, something I started 10 years ago. Uh, actually, started thinking about it before that, but that's kind of when the technology all came together. Uh, it is my attempt to create a website for all the trails in the province with all the information. Photography is a big part of what I do, so lots of nice pictures, uh, and actually get out and hike all the trails in the province. And it's hard because people keep building trails, which is good, <laughs> but it, it just it keeps going. So, and like I say, it's been ten years, and I'm I think I have 481 trails that I've hiked so far and have on the website. So, I'm getting close. That's amazing. amazing. <laughs> unreal <laughs> and I have to say I love as someone who is not a hiker as anyone who watches and listens regularly knows I love though that I go on your site and I feel like I have the information I need if I want to go try something and so I'm just I am so so grateful and so impressed with how well you've managed to do that for someone who's even like me who's like I don't know what these things are and what I should do <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I try to keep it simple because there's a uh, there's some people have perceptions that hiking is difficult and and it can be a big challenge but I mean we classify it as every 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 place that's made to take a walk basically that's everything from crushed rock trails and towns and cities to the big adventures and funny park kind of thing so cover the full gamut. Excellent. Excellent. Um, this past summer, a girlfriend and I kind of made it a mission to take our kids out and go waterfall chasing and uh, go trail chasing and whatever we could in New Brunswick this summer. And we did a couple of them on the advice of a couple of other websites that had wow the wrong information like <laughs> not just like like you get it right down to like the longitude and latitude and all of that jazz like you put everything on there but a lot of sites anybody can go in and say oh it was this or oh it was that um and there were a lot of trails where like we were dragging along two five-year-olds and two eight-year-olds and a lot of the trails that we did sh you should not have been bringing small children on yeah, like they were, they were super dangerous of, yeah some of the group sites it's they'll everything gets put on there so there's a bit of control on what i put on for trails and there's always a question on is this an official trail or like is, is it going to cause problems people getting lost and stuff there's some that are official trails that are just difficult too so i try and explain those as best i can with a map and I mean, it, it always surprises me to this day that to get out on trails and see maps that don't quite make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're very abstract <laughs> versions of what's actually on the ground. So very localized. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turn at that tree with the knot in it halfway up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but for, the, for the most part, most of the trails are easy to find and, and easy to go through. They're pretty well marked. So. I think part of what helps uh, you to condense this in a way is and your, your sense of quality and ownership that you need to get the right stuff out there. But you also do a lot of these trails with your family and with children involved. Which yeah. I think, I yeah. think that's, that, that's a, like, if you can make something work for kids, you can make it work for anyone. <laughs> yeah, well, we started this when the kids were young. I mean, the kids now, I have four kids uh, between the age of 14 and 18, so they're starting to go in every different direction. So, but the good thing about hiking is I can do it with one of them or four of them or none of them, or it's very flexible activity. So, and when and, they're young, um, I sometimes was dragging them along, but now they look forward to it. So. That's funny. Um, one of the trails that, that Jenna had been wanting to do uh, and I went and did in the spring was the Sussex Bluffs. Yeah. And, and she was like, do you like, do you recommend it for kids? And I was like, for some kids, they should be on a leash. But I'm also afraid of heights. So like you come out at the bluff and I was like hyperventilating and my kids yeah, are like, it's, it's cool, mom. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. 
it's almost worse because it's kind of rounded so it kind of tapers off like where some cliffs are just you know where the edge is that one's kind of yeah at what point does it become dangerous so. yeah, yeah exactly and everybody's like how far can we get out to take our awesome picture and i yeah. was like right here we're gonna stay on the trail <laughs> hold on to this tree <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh so but let's see, dive oh sorry james go I ahead say the bluffs is one of the one of the probably the most recommended places in the province it's amazing views up there it is and stunning it's, pretty, it's a pretty steady easy hike too so is it something that's accessible in winter? Do you know? Is it is it cleared at all? Um, on the spot. <laughs> not really cleared, but I would guess there's enough traffic up. I don't know if I've ever been up there in winter, to tell you the truth. But I think there'd be enough traffic up there that would be pretty uh, packed down, like for a trail up there. I just know that it, it did get so popular this summer in particular that the time when I finally did manage to get myself there to go do it the parking lot was so full and it's not even a parking lot like the parking but it was backed up and I was just yeah. like oh yeah no I'm gonna come back another time <laughs> and it's every, not a weekend maybe not like so sunny <laughs> <laughs> yeah everything's been like that this year the website traffic's up I, I think I just crossed over seven seven 782,000 page views and a regular year is in that 450 to 500,000 range so holy moly yeah. And it, and it continues in the January, like it's, it just continues going. So, and there's not that much snow. So there's a lot of, there's not much for restrictions on accessibility yet that you'd need snowshoes. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay. I want to talk a little bit about Fundy Park Yeah, and anything down Albert County way, because if anybody watches this show or listens to the show, they know that I am the queen of Albert County or self-proclaimed queen of Albert County. <laughs> <laughs> dictator <laughs> and also a dictator that's right um so where let's start with fundy i'm gonna put you on the spot what is your favorite trail in fundy uh summer or winter or both Ooh, good winter. okay winter, winter, winter for now winter. yeah all right i would say they're all great probably my favorite is the laverty falls moosehorn loop because of the the way the stream is and how you can swim there in the summer yeah. months definitely not in the winter months yeah <laughs> It's, it's hard to access in the winter. Third Vault Falls is amazing too, the biggest falls in the park. But even stuff like Kinney Brook Trail is, is amazing for kids. It's kind of tailored towards kids because it's a pretty easy trail. It just has a long staircase down into the valley at the end, but it goes by these big rock spires and stuff, and it's really cool. So I'm always impressed when I get to some of these trails and you don't hear much about them, and then you, you just <laughs> find awesome things. So, well, that's the thing, and especially Fundy, um, everybody goes to Dixon. Dixon, yeah. Dixon, Dixon, which yeah. is totally understandable because yeah. it's amazing, yeah. um, but it is probably the most popular trail in Fundy. So we okay. haven't done it in a couple of years just for that reason. Uh, but this year we discovered uh, Matthew's Head, which yes. was yeah. spectacular, like the yeah, scene, the scenery and Caribou Plain was nice too. Again, both of them quite yeah, easy is. for kids. So that's nice. Caribou Plain would be a good one in the wintertime. They have, that's one of the ones that it's ungroomed, but it's one of the ones they have open in the wintertime for snowshoeing. So nice open views and stuff it's pretty cool awesome we, what for, other i was just going to say with dixon falls how busy it is it, usually if somebody's asking for recommendations down there i'll try and steer them away from it just because it's it, it's like everywhere there's kind of that marquee trail that everybody goes to but there's so much else that's like the second third and fourth trails that are really amazing too so yeah if you just drive a little bit further yeah, <laughs> yeah. or walk a little bit further yeah yeah yeah, that's true. Or just, or just know who to ask, which yeah. is why we're talking to you. Yeah, definitely. I, we we actually, my wife and I got a chance to hike, which is the first time the uh, Salmon River Trail up by the headquarters. And it was the same thing. We were just amazed by the whole thing. You cross the river and we took, we went about halfway to Black Brook and then took a swim in the river and hike back. So really amazing experience too. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice spot. So outside of the park, what are some of your other top spots that you think people should be checking out? Top spots? Um, I'm partial to Fundy Trail Parkway because I'm on the board of directors with it. <laughs> Actually recently, recently became the president. So in the summer months, not much going on in the winter months down there. Um, but Walton Glen Gorge and the road getting pushed through is a, was a big deal this year lot of traffic i think it was it was almost double the traffic this year than it was in previous years so some of that's covid and some of that's opening up 
the road through to Sussex. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm originally from the Miramichi, so I like that northern woods side of things too. So I try and get up every year to do, there's the Piscuit Mi'kmaq Trail is 150 kilometers from Mount Carlton across to Bathurst. I try and get up there and do sections of that every year and then get up to Mount Carlton. I had a chance to get up to Mount Carlton again this year too. So had some amazing hikes. That was a, a place that I think is my bucket list for this coming summer is going to finally check out Mount Carlton. Is that uh, family friendly, that trail, do you find or? Uh, yeah, the only thing you got to watch, there's, it's, it's a big loop. And when you go on the loop, I guess, to the left, it goes up along a stream, but then it pops up on a, on a rocky ridge. So you're kind of clamoring a bit on the rocky ridge towards if everybody's ever seen the, uh, every, anybody's ever seen the fire tower that's there, which is kind of the icon of the mountain. Um, but if you take the right hand side, it's mostly it basically an ATV trail right up to just below the ridge where the tower is. And then it's just a quick climb up to the tower itself. So it okay. can be family friendly. Okay. When we took, actually, when we took the kids up there and did the loop one time, I forget what their ages were, but my uh, youngest daughter had fear of heights and had a bit of a meltdown on one of the ridges when we were crossing over the ridges. The two boy, the two youngest boys were gone and my wife had to go catch up with them because they just took off as soon as they started climbing rocks. But I stayed behind and had to coax her across the rocky ridge. So that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get, there's, lots, there's lots of other trails up there too so yeah okay yeah. I was just gonna say I uh, like the movie Everest I yeah. I feel sick to my stomach watching the movie so <laughs> like I can't even imagine being on a mountain that's not even remotely close to the same height as Everest and I'd be like yeah. this is it this is it for me <laughs> <laughs> just sit down. that's what my daughter did was just sat she just sat down and like I'm, I can't go on yeah yeah <laughs> It's hard to get her up and moving again, but there's one uh, which is not in New Brunswick, but Jenna is familiar with the Skyline Trail and Cape mm-hmm. Breton, and yeah. I got maybe ten steps down it, and my husband had to go. Fin- I just sat on the steps. I was like, I can't do this. I'm not. I'm not going any further. Like if a strong wind comes, we're gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, it's flipped now because a. Uh, we've taken the kids the last couple of years down to Mount Katahdin and tried to peak Mount Katahdin, which is about double the size of Mount Carlton. And it's the kids now are looking forward to when the border opens up and we can go again, because we haven't quite made it to the peak each time we ran out of time. And, but it, it, it's a complete contrast to that breakdown on Mount Carlton to climbing a huge mountain and uh, enjoying it. So it's nice to see. So keep trying is what you're suggesting. Just, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. Try you, can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Push them lightly, not too hard. <laughs> there are some days we got home that I didn't think the kids would ever go hiking again, but uh, <laughs> no, they like it. So if families are listening that are, you know, maybe more like me and looking for that easy in, <laughs> what are, what are some of your suggestions for that? uh lots around Moncton like just uh what if somebody's looking for a walk in the woods around Moncton I usually steer them towards the Dobson Trail I mean there's lots in town with Mapleton Park and Centennial Park you can rent snowshoes I did a blog post uh, a couple years ago on on how many places there are around the province that you can rent or borrow snowshoes I think it's 35 or 40 even the libraries you can sign them out most libraries with the library card so um so any of the ones in around town are safe bets because they're kind of contained and 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 there's lots of traffic um dobson trail probably the first two kilometers in riverview and uh i think it's pine glen where it starts that first two kilometers is well traveled but if you're more adventurous there's it, it crosses roads many places out along the way it's 58 kilometers all the way through to fundy park so we've we've hiked sections of it i noticed last night i've been looking for one of the major lookouts that's out there i think it's the prosser brook lookout and i noticed last night that we've hiked on both sides of that section but we haven't hiked that section yet so (laughs) it's worth it it is a it's a steep hike up but it's totally worth it yeah the uh, yeah yeah That's a good one. Um, so let's talk about hiking with kids. What do you suggest, like if you're planning to take your kids out for the day and maybe it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a couple hour hike. What do you pack with you? 
Uh, definitely snacks. When I met my wife, she was wondering why I drug my kids around and didn't have many snacks packed. And I would always be wondering why they got so grumpy during the hike. So it's, it's one thing to keep them fed and watered. And then it's to, to spark their interest and keep them interested, I think is the other thing. So they don't get bored if they're younger. Okay. I like that. So maybe even like if you plan a scavenger hunt to, to take along with you, like identifying trees or birds or insects or what have you. Yeah, definitely. Stuff like that. Just, yeah, just looking at the world around you and, and kind of bringing it to their attention kind of thing. Keep them motivated. So I know, in my head, I went to like make it a competition. Who can find what? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the kids. We had the full range. <laughs> There's one kid that always wanted to be in the front of the line and <laughs> other ones that are just kind of wandering around. So yeah. <laughs> Yes, that 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 is a very very tricky <laughs> scenario. Sometimes the the few the, the few hikes we've done with ours, yes, we have that similar like one wants to run ahead and one's trailing behind, and then upset that he's trailing behind. Yeah. And why are you here? And what are you making me do this for? <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst day of my life. Yeah, yes. we did bring lots of snacks though. Yeah, yeah. no, that's good. No, the, the big thing <laughs> keeping them interested too is if you can pick trails that are more like along streams or along views or stuff like that they're not much for walking long distances to get to some of these places so anything that's kind of consistently along a stream or something like that keeps them interested more that's a good point i've i've had even adult friends comment on some of those some of the hikes that became very popular over the last couple of years in social media because of that vista you get at the end. Everyone wants that iconic shot up there. Yeah. And yeah. one of my friends who's a huge promoter of her local area <laughs> did one of those iconic hikes and went online. She was like, no, 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 I'm telling you the truth. Getting there is so boring. <laughs> she was just like, she was like, people need to know. You, Cause she took her kids and she's like, yeah. people need to know it's a boring two hour, yeah. you know, like, yes, the end is worth it, but oh my goodness, getting there was the most boring thing because it was not a long water. It was not, there wasn't anything other than woods to look at. Oh yeah. She's yeah, like, if I, I'd I, known I, that going in. <laughs> yeah. I see that when I try and make videos or even in podcast episodes and stuff, it's, it's hard to fill in that gap of the, just the straight walking. <laughs> so it's just a video of the end and it doesn't really show the whole trail. So and still try and make it exciting. So, I mean, and, that, and that's it. Yeah. Like you, uh, you mentioned, um, you take your recording equipment along with you when you go on some of these trails and, and you put it in audio form and you put it in video form. I definitely have watched a couple of the videos before. Um, and I think actually it was a, a Mount Carlton one with, with you following your daughter along, um, that I had checked out, but, um, how do you know, like how to make it a long enough episode. I mean, it's, you're getting great sound effects, you know what I mean? With you walking and stuff, but, yeah. but how do you turn it into an entire episode? Um, a lot of it is just the bigger hikes. There's so much material. Like I come back with too much material kind of thing and I can edit it down to something that kind of is coherent and <laughs> has, has meaning. Um, some of the stuff I just have saved on my hard drive. I have all kinds that I that haven't been published because they just don't end up being a story. Like it, it would just be a picture of the end kind of thing. So, so it's, it's editing is what it comes down to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the magic behind the scenes. That's, yeah. that's for sure. There's a few trails uh, around here that you could totally tell the cool historic story that goes along with it. Like a, a lot of them have to do with mining or milling or what have you. So there could be co some cool stories, I suppose, that come out of it. And that I, I think that people should go see to learn the history, especially uh, I can bring it back to Fundy because it's the only place that I know, yeah. but, um, but there's so much history in Fundy park before they turned it into a national park, right? Like if you went down to uh, point wolf or, or what have you, and you can still go down that trail and and see the uh like the old pieces of what would have been the pier before um yeah. you could you could definitely make it interesting that way too if, if you could tell some ghost stories along with it yeah yeah no i've done that before a friend of mine scared the kids one time because he would he would read the signs about the ghost stories and then he would kind of <laughs> jump out of the woods and <laughs> reenact them a bit with the kids so that was a bit much i think for <laughs> but it made for an exciting hike no, there's lots of history all through. I mean, the, the other one is the, the Fundy footpath goes between Fundy Park and Fundy Trail Parkway. And we've been on every section of it. We haven't hiked it from end to end yet. It's 41 kilometers plus another 10 in the park. So 50 kilometers and it is very rugged. 
extreme country. So, but every time we're down there, we see stuff or we see pictures after the fact that we were standing right beside something, didn't even see a big kilns where there used to be mills or, or old telegraph lines that run up some of the trails going up the hill, like where, how they communicated. It was just amazing, amazing history. Even uh, in the middle of the trail is Martin Head, which is a kind of, it's an island, but it's attached to the land with a gravel bar. And it has the abutment of a lighthouse and just all kinds of stuff like that. So probably not the place you're going to take kids, <laughs> but if you're looking for a big adventure, uh, there's, there's history all along that coast. I mean, there's been stuff going on there for hundreds of years. So. That's uh, Walton Glen Gorge. Um, to get down to that, it's not kid friendly. I've heard it's quite steep to get down like into the eye of the needle. It has been. I haven't been on it. There's a bunch of trail work was done this year on it, actually, to make it more friendly. It's still rugged, like you're going down into a deep ravine and it's 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 pretty steep and it's pretty. But it's 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 better than it was, I guess. OK, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend taking young kids down there yet, though. But I'm yeah, sure teenagers would love it. Yeah. And I mean, it's one of those things too, where you get to the bottom and, and to be able to see the eye of the needle. Um, I've only seen pictures of it. I hadn't had a chance to see it in, uh, in real life. And it, it's just such a, I mean, I know it's not a natural wonder, but it almost feels like it is. Right. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. yeah. No, I mean, you get down there and it's 200 foot cliffs on either side, like going up and they're all kind of crooked and jagged. And, uh, there's a deep pool at the bottom of it. It's just, you look up and you can't really see the trees up above and stuff. It's pretty, it's really cool. And you go by big waterfalls and big cliffs and stuff. It's an amazing hike. Oh, that sounds so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we should probably get around to wrapping her up here. Um, so we have mentioned you do videos. We've mentioned you do podcasting. And then, of course, the website. So how are we sending people to find you? Uh, best thing is hikingmbe.ca website is where kind of the center of everything. So everything stems off from that. The videos are attached to the trails and at the top is a link to the podcast. So in the podcast, I try and interview people that are involved in the trails because there's a lot of people behind the scenes that make these trails what they are. So big shout out to them. It's fantastic. There's, there's so much information on that side with, you know, obviously 10 years, there's going to be a lot, but it's also the work you've put into it in preserving and capturing some of this, which is an amazing service for all of us here in New Brunswick. And, and just a nod to that. It's not just New Brunswick. When you're able to travel, you've done a lot of posts about Nova Scotia and Maine and everywhere else yeah, as absolutely. well. So PEI website is probably the next biggest one. And then I've got some stuff in the Maine too. So still a lot to upload it's an it's an endless process that'll go on forever <laughs> <laughs> to follow along as it does and maybe maybe i'll even get out and do some more of those <laughs> sure you will <laughs> i actually I, I will bundy park has a, a post yesterday that has uh, i think they're called ski snowshoes which are a wider they're basically a really wide ski short ski so Something that would be oh, exciting to try with kids. I did, I did, I did do the snowshoe of the first like kilometer. Yeah, I think it was about one one k that I did on the Dobson last year. No, two years ago. Last yeah, year. yeah. Or on the loop. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, and out to the the fire pit and everything, and it was fantastic. It was it oh, was really wonderful. Nice. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do more this year, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it, James. You heard it. I he said, I'll try. I'm going to keep watching the... <laughs> yeah. Keep checking the Pickle Planet page to see how yeah. many how many hikes she gets out and does. Um, and uh, we really want to thank you for your time. And we want to keep people posted with whatever's happening with trails in and around New Brunswick, too. Um, even if they're not kid-friendly, they're definitely cool ones to check out. And we've talked about some big trails today. But like you said, they don't all need to be done in a day like no, you mentioned the dobson and the dobson can be split into uh many different days or what have you so um it doesn't have to be a you know 50 hour mission every time you go out with the kids you can just it can be as big as you want it to be it yeah you walk in the park in in town yeah exactly perfect yeah. okay well, awesome thank you again for your time thank you